This is the fourth video in the Theory of the Firm uh, video series for um, high-level IB economics students. Uh, this will be part one of the short-run costs of production. In the previous videos, I explained the difference between the long run and the short run. I talked about economic costs, implicit costs, and explicit costs, and I talked about production in the short run. Uh, this video will focus on short-run costs. So let's start with a very quick recap. Costs of production. In the short run, there are fixed factors and variable factors. This means because there are fixed factors, there will be fixed costs. And because there are variable factors, there will be variable costs. So in the short run, firms have both fixed costs and variable costs. However, in the long run, it's slightly different. In the long run, all factors are variable. In the long run, this is the period that it takes for the firm to be able to change or vary all its inputs. Therefore, in the long run, because all factors are variable, all costs are also variable. There are no fixed costs. This video will focus more on the short run. So we are going to have a look at the short run where there are fixed costs as well as variable costs. So we mentioned that in the short run there are fixed costs and variable costs. Let's start by defining the term total costs. It's very important to be able to define total costs as well as calculate them. Total costs are the complete costs that are incurred to produce a firm's output. So it includes all of the costs that the firm pays in order to be able to produce its output. Total cost is the sum of all fixed costs and variable costs. So total cost in the short run is divided into fixed costs and variable costs. Let's have a look at the difference between fixed costs and variable costs. So Fixed costs. Let's start with fixed costs. Fixed costs, these are the costs that arise from the use of fixed inputs. So they are the costs that are associated with your fixed inputs. The factors of production that you cannot change in the short run. Say, for example, if you only have one uh, building where your factory is located and you can't as a firm, you can't move into another building. So in the short run, that building is a fixed factor of production. It's a fixed input. Therefore, any costs associated with it will be fixed costs. Fixed costs do not are costs that do not change as output changes, and they arise only in the short run. Examples of fixed costs are things like rent, interest on any loans you may have taken from the bank, insurance premiums, property taxes, these are all fixed costs. Regardless of the level of output that you produce, or even if you're producing nothing, if your level of output is zero, you're still going to be paying them. Now, the sum of all fixed costs, when you add all of your fixed costs together, this will give you your total fixed costs. Variable costs, on the other hand, these are the costs that arise from the use of variable inputs. These are the costs that vary, the costs that change as output changes. And so, variable cost will increase as output increases and decrease as output decreases. Examples of variable costs are wages for labor, the cost of buying raw materials. When you add all of the variable costs together, this will give you your total variable costs. Now remember, variable costs increase as output increases and they decrease as output decreases. How much you pay in variable costs will depend on how much you produce. And if your production level is zero, your variable costs will be zero. So we said earlier that total cost equals total fixed cost plus total variable cost. Here is a numerical example. Assume a firm can produce this level of output here from zero up until 1,200 units. Its fixed cost is, say, $30 per month. Again, fixed costs in this situation could be uh, the rent of the building or it could be the interest on a loan that it's taken from the bank. Now, the variable cost is here, as you can see. 
um, the variable cost will increase as output increases. You can see it's always increasing. Total cost, you just add both of them together. So 30, 30 plus 0 will give you 30. 30 plus 30 will give you 60. 30 plus 50 will give you 80 and so on until you have a column with the total costs. You need to be able to calculate total costs, fixed costs and variable costs from a set of data. Now if you graph this data that we just um, had a look at in the previous slide, you will see that the fixed cost curve it is that blue horizontal line here. Now because fixed costs are fixed they do not change regardless of the level of output. Therefore, when you plot a graph which shows the relationship between costs on the vertical axis and output on the horizontal axis, the fixed cost curve should be a horizontal line that does not change. So here we said fixed costs were 30, so you would plot it at 30 and it would be a horizontal straight line. Variable costs have to always begin from the origin, from zero, because when your output is zero, your variable cost will be zero. So variable cost is that green curve in this diagram here. As you can see, at first it increases at a decreasing rate, and then it starts to increase again at an increasing rate. The total cost curve will have to begin from the same point as the beginning of the fixed cost curve and that's because when your output is zero your fixed costs are fixed but your variable costs are zero so when the output is zero your total cost is just your fixed cost and it would be a parallel curve it is this gray curve that is parallel to the variable cost curve here again it increases at first at a decreasing rate and then it increases at an increasing rate Now we understand why the fixed cost curve is a horizontal line, but why is the variable cost and the total cost, why do they both increase at a decreasing rate first and then they increase at an increasing rate? Well, this is because of the law of diminishing marginal returns. Basically, when total cost and variable cost are increasing at a decreasing rate, that's because diminishing returns has not yet set in. Once diminishing returns sets in, and therefore marginal product and average product start to fall, what you would see is that total cost and variable cost will start to increase, but at an increasing rate. Now remember, they're always increasing, but when it's increasing at a decreasing rate, diminishing returns has not yet set in. Once they both begin to increase at an increasing rate, then diminishing returns has set in.